What's up, guys? Welcome back to YouTube. Today, we're going to be talking about Players' Cup 4, my run, and we'll talk about if I qualified or not, so let's jump right into it. Okay, guys, here we are. I am here, Players' Cup 4. If you guys have been paying attention to my Twitter, that kind of stuff, if you don't want to continue watching the rest of the video, I am at 106 rep, so I did qualify, possibly, and probably for Phase 2 of this Players' Cup 4, making it 4 for 4, but if you want to stick around, I can show the lists and the journey that I went through to if, like, the, the journey and what lists I played throughout the way, so we're going to talk about it right now. The first deck I ended up starting off with was Rapid Striker Shifu. My first 5 to 10 keys went super excellently. The next 2 to 3 started failing me. I started hitting a lot of Decidueye and a lot of Luke Metal decks. So this Rapid Striker Shifu list is nothing different from what I played um, at uh, one of the chill tournaments. Um, it also looks very similar to the list that Azul used to win Players Cup 3. I think the list has a lot of uh, versatility and it holds up in this current meta. I simply just play a copy of Tool Scrapper that other lists do not play. I really do like the list and how it operates. It has a lot of tech cards and a lot of agency to deal with a lot of matchups. Um, also, just at the end of the day, Rapid Striker Shifu is a very strong card and it gives you a lot of options to play how you want to play. But then I started doing very poorly with my keys. And at that point, I switched over to Psychic Mewtwo because I heard Psychic Mewtwo was all the rage. I felt like this deck was a little bit unexplored at the time and it could make a splash. So this Psychic Mewtwo list is the one I used. Um, I will have all the links in the description down below if you guys want to check them out. I will make sure to have all of them in there. So definitely give it a copy, give it a paste. If you're doing that, also remember to subscribe and help out a homie and give me a like as well. That would really mean a lot to me. But I used the Psychic Mewtwo list. I added Greninja GX into my list, not because of Elusive Master. No, 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 don't get me wrong. But I had Mist Slash in there because I was seeing a lot of Decidueye pop up here and there. And, you know, Decidueye will occasionally crop up in these best of one tournaments where people aren't prepared for it because when that happens, you really, um, like, you really can't do anything about it and just take a loss. And it's like free rep here and there. And, like, you can pretty much win a tournament uh, doing nothing, <laughs> actually, with Decidueye. That's why it's a really good deck. Um, but then I started hitting this Decidueye list that had Persian in it. And that means I can't attach special energy from my hand, which means Aurora energy doesn't do anything for me. And uh, I started finding myself in a pickle, and this deck wasn't working. So then I switched over to Pikaram. This is the Pikaram list I was using. Um, four Boltund, of course. I think if you're not playing four Boltund, you're definitely doing something wrong. Uh, I was playing two copies of Stealthy Hood to deal with all the Rapid Striker Shihus at the time that were playing uh, Mimikyu and heavier cards like that. And I also had... You know, the rest of the core of the deck is pretty much the same. Nothing really special about the deck. Pikaram is Pikaram. You can't really, like, fit something new into it. It's pretty much been the same core for the last little bit. But Pikaram was also failing me. I was losing out bottom eight a couple times. And by the time I knew it, I was still on vacation when I was playing a lot of these keys. By the time I knew it, I was down to 23 keys left. And I had only accumulated 37 rep, which, for those of you counting at home, is not good. I had used now 27 keys... And I was averaging well below two. Um, and I was not on pace whatsoever to make it. I would really need to pick up the slack. But how did I end up picking up 106 rep? Or I guess now like 69 more rep. Nice. Drop a nice in the comments. Uh, in uh, in like my remaining 23 keys. That's pretty insane what I average. So let's look at the final list that I played. So I ended up playing Luke Metal for about 10 of my keys. Uh, this Luke Metal list, I forgot where I saw it on Twitter. But uh, I saw it on Twitter. It looked really good. It was doing well at tournaments at the time. And Luke Metal was a deck that carried me in a very similar fashion towards the end of Players' Cup 2, where I was also bombing out of the event, and I thought I didn't have a chance to make it. But uh, as time went on, I kind of picked up Luke Metal and started winning. And the biggest thing about Luke Metal is not the fact that your deck is insane, but the fact that other people make mistakes. So Lucario Mel Metal obviously has your full Metal Wall GX attack, which pretty much puts everything in your deck outside of one-shot range besides Fire-type decks. But then we got Coding Energy to deal with fire type decks as well but the problem is some of these decks are playing giratina some of these decks are playing fan of waves and that's where things get really tricky baby blue self is probably one of your worst matchups just because they can blow through you really quickly and things get really tough but i really like this list i didn't make any changes to it i believe i thought about playing a wondrous labyrinth but i didn't the deck ended up carrying me to a lot of tournament wins even matchups i shouldn't have won this bad boy zashin over here with the intrepid sword and brave blade just by itself was carrying games i was winning mirrors because i know how to play luke metal mirror really really well actually um it's one of those weird things that i picked up along the way um so i picked that up um zamazenta was winning me games auto win i remember hitting someone in the finals i was playing rapid strike or Eternatus, and I guess they didn't play a copy of Phoebe, and they just instantly conceded the game as soon as they saw Zamazenta, um, which was really weird to me because, like, I don't know why you wouldn't just play it out, make me make a misplay, make me bench something that isn't, uh, make me bench, like, a 6th and 7th prize that isn't Zacian or Luke Metal. Um, 
and give yourself a chance to win. But I guess they really didn't have faith in it. Um, and then while I'm playing all this, all of a sudden I started losing with this as well. And at this point, though, I was already back on track. I was like 80 rep with about 10 keys left, I think. Uh, or like 80 rep with like... No, I had 81 rep with 10 keys remaining. I had caught up super, super well. So now I'm not worried too much. I have 10 keys and I need to grab about 19 rep in these 10 keys. So I have to average two rep a key. And that's not really hard to do. Uh, and so I decided to go ahead and play, go back to my tried and true deck, a rapid strike. Because what I had been seeing on the ladder now and at this point is a lot of people were switching and pivoting into these peak arm decks and ADP decks. So the meta had come full circle where ADP with sword uh, kind of rose back to prominence and peak arm was back to the top again, just because of virtue of people not, you know, dealing with it. And peak arm also like going second is a really, really strong deck with bolt hunt. And there's very little that can actually stop it from setting up and doing what it needs to do. And stamp uh, paralyzed to one is a very incredibly strong combo that no deck can really effectively play around. Um, besides maybe like Decidueye, I don't know with the aromatic energy. If you're playing aromatic energy, I don't know what's, what's up with you. But I came back to old tried and true to pick up these last couple of rep. And I was doing really well. I was like pretty much smurfing on the event. People were not changing things. A list of adapted to the pack, fact where Stealthy Hood and stuff is coming out of decks. So I came back to this uh, 60 card list that I had been working on um, for a very long time. Nothing has changed. I'm a huge fan of every single card in this list still. I don't think I would change a single card. And for all intents and purposes, if Players Cup 4 Phase 2 was tomorrow, this is the list that I would bring. Um, I don't really have an idea of what I want to bring currently. Fire seems really excellent, seems really strong. Picarum seems really excellent, seems really strong. Luke Metal seems excellent, seems really strong. Every deck seems good. Every deck seems bad. But at the end of the day, the two decks that I'm most comfortable with are Lucario Melmetal and Rapid Striker Shifu. So between one of those two decks, I will probably be bringing them to the event. They both have similar weaknesses. Um, so it doesn't really shore up my weaknesses in terms of what I can do. But I do expect when it comes to a nine round Swiss event that players will be more prepared to deal with a deck like Luke Metal than they would be a deck like Rapid Strike or Shifu. And in a best of three event, I think Luke Metal is going to have a lot more trouble winning because of uh, time. <laughs> so I believe it's going to be 50 minutes, probably best of three times. So when that happens, Luke Metal is going to have a lot tougher of a time winning. Um, and so I don't want to have those ties. So with all that considered, there's probably going to be a pretty good chance I end up blocking in Rapid Strike or Shifu and rolling the dice to see what happens. Um, I also want to like add a caveat that some of the Luke Metal games I did win uh, we're due to my opponent timering out in these events because both players are given 12.50 on the clock. And by making a lot of actions and just taking time and trying to figure out how to do with Luke Metal, they probably wouldn't have won the game. But I kept them in the game long enough to the point where just the, the simple attack animations and the simple progression of the game got to the point where they were running out of time clock or time on the clock. And that won me the game. So like I think I played against a Zard deck that I ended up sticking their Zard in the active and they couldn't really pivot it. They eventually ended up losing the game because of timer. And like the same thing applied to a Decidueye deck that I had no answer into. Uh, and I knew they played Apom. So I was just constantly marning whenever I could uh, to make it so I wouldn't deck or like get Apom into a bad situation uh, and marning and then Cynthia Caitlin and bring that Marnie back. And I would just continuously keep the game going. And they, their four or five seconds it took them to attack every turn ended up being their downfall, which doesn't apply to a best of three 50 minutes. If it's best of three untimed, which I highly doubt that will happen. Um, then maybe Luke Metal's a better play. But as of now, this is the list I'm probably locking into Players' Cup for second phase. I know I talked very quickly and a lot of information got covered very quickly, but all the lists are going to be in the description down below. Remember to show me some love if you enjoyed it. And I'll hopefully, let me know what you guys are doing for your rep and how you are right now. We have two days by the time you see this video to get your rep done. So please play out your keys. Don't let your keys go unwasted. Don't be caught off by surprise. And uh, I will be going on vacation, so I don't know if there's going to be a video on Friday, but uh, on Wednesday, you can expect a video where I will probably talk about uh, what to expect for Players' Cup 4 Phase 2, kind of go through the PDFs and the documents and how to kind of go through that if we get those on hand. I could probably look at the Players' Cup 3 ones, let me know in the comments. But thank you for watching this video. I'm going to make this quick and short. I don't want to take more of your time. Um, until next time, guys, thank you so much for the love. Thank you for all the support. And check out my TikToks. Bye-bye.